this thing on? No, does it work? Switch. Hello? No? Yeah, it worked? Yep. We're good? Good. Cool. Uh, over here. Hello, everybody. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Carvana. Um, and the title of our data was called Don't Get Kicked. We were, like many other groups here, going to be doing uh, patient uh, no-shows, but unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, I think we got that one covered, so we moved on to a separate topic. Okay. Okay. No, so, let's hit the next slide. Oh, my bad. Um, no, go back one. So a little bit of background about uh, Carvana. Well, first off, has anyone ever heard of Carvana before? Ever bought a car from Carvana? No? All right. Well, um, they're a relatively new company. Um, they've been around since 2014 as a spinoff from their parent company. Um, and they're, they're part of a larger corporation called DriveTime. Um, and what DriveTime does is they, they take used cars from auctions um, so that they kind of try to find cars that are cheap, uh, good cars, so they can go back and, and kind of sell those cars. So Carvana was kind of a, a spinoff from this company, um, from DriveTime, and DriveTime really encourages um, their employees to, to kind of have new ideas, fresh ideas. Um, so this, this is where Carvana came, uh, came from. Uh, so DriveTime uh, has, they buy approximately 150,000 cars each year at auctions, and about 8% of these cars bought at auctions uh, do not pass inspection. So these cars that don't pass inspection the Carvana or drive time is going to have to spend a lot of money um, doing repairs and kind of trying to figure out how they can go back and, and kind of resell those cars. So it's just important um, when we're looking at our data going, uh, going forward that we identify um, cars, or good cars, basically. Uh, and this is just a little, uh, it's a little cool thing uh, that Carvana does. They have kind of like uh, vending machines where you can go in and get you know, a token, basically, and put it into the slot. And the in the car kind of it opens up the slot to your car, so they're they're really trying to revolutionize the the used car industry. Yeah. Okay, so basically this data set deals with attempting to identify kicked cars at the time of auction. So kicked cars refer to cars that have serious issues that might not be that obvious during the auction. While not visually obvious. Um, so these kicked cars can cost dealers thousands of dollars in between. You know, taking the loss fixing the car and then reselling it. So the value of the predictive modeling here is so that we can figure out which cars are most likely to be uh, defected during the time of auction so the, um, so the dealers can identify them and avoid the cost. And they have more money to spend on actually good cars. So from our data set, we see that the, uh, the average cost of a car during auction is around $6,700. And through a little bit of logic and research, we figured out that the profit margin is 20% or around um, $1,600, 1685 And if it's a kick car, uh, kick car then the uh, dealers will have to take around a 50% loss, which is roughly around $3,300. Um, so we go to the, um, the confusion matrix a little bit. We see that if it's a true negative, then the dealers are making in profit of around $1,685. Um, if it's a true positive, then you're avoiding the 50% lot, loss and you're saving on the $3,300. And if you see the numbers, we see the true value here is that correctly identifying um, cars being kicked, especially avoiding um, False, uh, false negatives. Where if the model predicts that the car is a good car and it turns out to be kicked, you're losing out. Um, you're losing out um, on thirty-three hundred dollars of your fifty percent of your cost. So it's it's more profitable for you. Or it's better for the dealer to potentially avoid a good car than to you know be stuck with a bad car and then you have to you know spend thirty-three hundred and you were low on money. So our, our data set included uh, thirty-two independent variables, one ID column, which we got rid of, and one target variable. So the target variable, as I said before, um, was trying to identify whether cars were kicked or not. Um, if the car was a kick or a bad buy, meaning it wasn't uh, properly functioning, uh, to get the label of one. And if it was a good car, get a label of zero. Um, so there was, we're not gonna spare you from the entire data dictionary as there's a lot of variables, but there was a range of information about the cars, um, the make, model, submodel, um, the amount of miles on the car, uh, the average value of the car, and just a whole bunch of different things. So when we were kind of pre-processing our data, there was a lot of uh, null values and, and empty values. Um, so we kind of went back and, and used the make submodel um, and just a little, a couple more characteristics to kind of use um, either logistic or linear regression to figure out uh, what those null, null values might be. Uh, and it worked out pretty nicely for the most part, uh, except for one variable, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, yeah, so, so for the most part, um, we just kind of removed a couple variables 
um, and just transformed a few and, and stuck with the rest. So as you can see here, 88% um, of our, our values were good cars and only 12% of our, our cars are kick cars. And this kind of presented a bit of an issue for us, um, as I'll sh we'll show in a second, uh, just for the fact that uh, when we were running our, our initial models, um, we were getting very uh, few true positives um, and, and uh, false negatives just for the fact that our model was kind of just assuming every car was good. Because that gave us an, basically 88% 80, uh, correct predictions. Okay. So when we, when we first ran these models, um, obviously it's a classification problem. We're trying to identify whether the car is kicked or not. So we were getting very good accuracy in the beginning, but our precision was terrible. And this, this had to do the fact with that our target variable, um, our, our target of interest basically, um, was under undersampled in our data. So we kind of had to go back and look around and see what we could do to kind of fix this problem a bit. Um, so we found out Azure uh, has this thing called smote uh, random set or oversampling. And what this did was allow us to kind of change our, our target variable sample a bit. So instead of it being 88% to 12%, it was more like 65% to 35%. Um, and so what this ended up doing was increase, increased our, uh, our recall a bit and kept our accuracy about the same as it was before. Um, and as we were running our models, basically, um, recall is our, our most important metric, um, just for the fact that the, the actual money we're getting from, uh, or the money we, we, we would be losing from, from buying kicked cars was, was one of the, you know, the more important thing. But in the end, um, you know, as we're making our decisions, the, the most impo important thing is the, the money we'll be making or saving from, from our model. So we ended up using, uh, the optimal payoff as our, as our most important metric. And this, and this for us ended up being the, the boosted decision tree um, with a threshold of 36%. So as you can see here, we ran the five models that we, we talked about in class in Azure, and the, the optimal threshold ended up being 36%. Um, so this means that we were more likely to, to classify cars as being kicked, or, or, uh, as being kicked, just for the fact that we're, we're um, the, the kicked car value was, was a one, so we were kind of lowering the threshold a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, so as we were decreasing the threshold, basically we just increased the likelihood that we would label the car as a kicked car. Um, and as you can see here from our, from our, our, our payoff, the, the optimal model was a boosted tree decision, about 43 million. Um, and the, the neural network was close, but the, the rest were a little bit off, so uh, we ended up going with the boosted tree as our, as our best model. Um, so yeah, so these were the, the five most important um, factors that ended up uh, determining our model. So the, so the first one we had was the, the wheel type, uh, whether it was alloy, was covered, special, or null. And originally when we, we had this data, we, we wanted to get rid of the null values and we used um, logistic regression to kind of figure out what those, those null values would be. And unfortunately, actually this made our model worse. So we, we ended up keeping, putting the null values back in there and using it as a separate category. Uh, the second one was the vehicle age, just how old the car was, nice and simple. Third one was the make of the car, whether it was a Chevy, a Honda, et cetera, um, whatever, whatever um, the make of the car was. The fourth one was the, the MR acquisition, retail average price. And, and this was just the average price of the car if it was in decent condition. And the last one was the top three American, whether it belonged to one of the three uh, biggest American companies, Chrysler, GM, Ford, and if not, it would be labeled as another. So um, this visualization simply shows that the vehicles that are not able to be classified are the vehicles that are most likely to be get kicked, which shows the null values of 70%. <clears throat> then the second visualization, vehicle age versus cars getting kicked, it simply shows that the older the vehicle, the more likely the vehicle is going to get kicked. As you can see, um, the highest is um, 31% at age nine, and the least is 4% at a year old. And this visualization shows <clears throat> the make, the, uh, the brand of the car that is most likely gonna get kicked when you buy it. And to our surprise, Chevy has the least <clears throat> probability of getting kicked, while Oldsmobile has the highest probability of getting kicked with 20%. This visualization um, <clears throat> shows the 
shows the, the price of the car versus it getting kicked. It simply shows that the higher the price, the least likely it is for the car to get kicked. But lower the price, the more likely it is for the vehicle to get kicked. As you can see here, the most expensive car um, was 19,500, and the probability of getting kicked was zero. But the car of 1,005, uh, which the, the probability of getting kicked was 32.14. Then our last, <clears throat> this one shows if the highest number of cars getting kicked are one of the um, top three American cars. So in this um, visualization, we can see that <clears throat> Chrysler is least likely to get kicked, while Ford is the most likely to get kicked in American cars. Okay, uh, so just the next steps from, from a model and kind of what we learned from it. Um, so we added uh, more features. We, we want to add more features such as engine type and other information about the, the car, maybe the number of cylinders, something like that. Um, just because we thought kind of there could be, there's definitely more information out there that we could be using um, to kind of help predict our models better. Um, and we could go to third party insurance companies that might have more additional data um, from, from uh, you know, just, just getting information about the customers and how they drive and stuff like that, uh, just to see if we get more information about their cars. Um, so basically also another thing for us that was big was just kind of the, the oversampling and, and how the fact that um, when the, just because of the, of the fact that our, our car, the, the sample was very poorly distributed and the fact that the, the one was uh, much lower in, in percentage versus the zero was a, was a big factor for us. Um, so going forward, um, a couple other things, we just want to make, we want to figure out why the wheel type was null. Um, that would be a big factor just because the, the jump from the other, other three types was huge, going from around 8 to 11 to 13%, going up to 70%. So if you're a company and you're, you're an auction, you kind of want to look at those, those wheel types and kind of see um, kind of why, like what's missing or, or, and what's going on there. And the second, second most important thing for us was the, the age of the car. Um, so obviously, as the, the, the older the car gets, the more likely it's going to have problems. So you know, it's, it's very important for, for anyone to look at. Um, and just one one other thing I wanted to just show before we, yeah. the so the um, the cars that had a, a lower value were more likely to be kicked. So we might not want to worry about those as much, um, just because th those cars are cheaper, um, and the cars that are generally have a higher value are going to be less likely to be kicked. So that could be just another thing to look at going forward, um, just because. Even if you buy a cheaper car that's kicked, um, you're not going to lose as much, you're not going to lose as much money just because of the fact that the car is cheaper. So yeah. that's it. I think your date is lying. I drive a Chevy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was not another thing we. Surprise. We were looking at the. We thought American cars would be sh like crappier than the foreign cars, but it didn't always. Yeah, it didn't it didn't agree with that in the uh, in the model. So that's another thing. Yeah, I agree with you though. Usually the American cars are <laughs> not always as good. Um. Well, we yeah we, I think we we oversampled it before we split the data. They shouldn't do that. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I think I ran it. So to clarify, uh, if you have one minority class, by the way, ten percent is, is not really a problem. Okay. Uh, you can well. uh, create a synthetic data set so that a model like Lucid Decision Tree finds the boundaries to separate one class from the other. Uh, but then you should not oversample uh, the validation data set because. And a quick follow up. So, any thoughts on why null type on the wheel uh, or null value on the wheel type well, is a signal? It could have been the fact that the car is pretty beat up and just doesn't have anything there. Um, salvaged. What do you say? Maybe probably the car was salvaged or something. So, 
that's why they couldn't like classify the wheel type because maybe it has missing wheels due to the accident or something. I don't know. And just a couple of follow-ups. Any sense on how big the used car market is versus the new car market? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I know I was you know, when I was reading a little bit, I saw the the auction environment's gotten a lot more competitive over the past 20 years. Um, so used cars are two and a half times size market size versus new cars. So it's a much commercial, much more important market. Um, and there are a lot of questions. Why don't they do an inspection before they buy the car? Can you just go, like at an auction, can you just go and inspect the car? Is that a thing? Right. Well, nine, oh, I mean, like, so on average, 92 percent of the cars aren't aren't being uh, are usually are generally good cars. Um, and, and so you're saying it's just not worth. Well, no, I mean, plus you're, you're making it. You know, obviously the ones you're making good cars from are, you know, you're making a lot of money off of those. So. So it's a structural format. Uh, the auctions uh, don't give enough time. time yeah, that makes sense, Teddy. That, that, that's why. Okay. So they would love to. In ten minutes, they could. Find Should make a decision. Make a decision. Do we buy this one? This one. What's that? They won't have to clarify. They do. They I do. I think it's actually low volume, so I don't think they want to open up the new business. So yeah, it's, uh, it's it's a very peculiar market. <laughs> Anyways, but Carvana is now a publicly traded company, and uh, they managed to turn it into a viable business. And uh, now I'm not the only one. 